Yeah, this story is a story of grace. Um, it says uh, journeys of faith, stories of grace. This isn't actually a journey of how I came to faith. This is a story about what God has done in my life over probably the last 10 or so years. So there's two aspects to this story. Um, it's partly about how God provided a job for me during a really difficult time in my life. So it's about God's provision and his perfect timing. But more importantly for me, it's about how God redefined my purpose and my self-esteem and the way that we kind of value and perceive ourselves. And this journey God has been, um, this journey that I've been on with God has been ongoing for literally over 10 years um, throughout all of my 20s. Um, some of you may be thinking I only look about 22, uh, even though I have a baby face. I'm actually 31. <laughs> um, there you go. So some background detail it's useful to know. Uh, in my teenage years, uh, leading into uni, I was devoted to music and trained to become a professional musician. Um, I got a place at music college and was fully immersed into the world of performing arts. And I had been a follower of Jesus since 16 years old, but whilst I was learning more about identity in Christ and what it means to be a follower of Jesus, I was also immersed in this world of performing arts, which had a huge influence on my way of thinking. And for me, training to be a musician created a way of thinking in me that said, my value as a person directly correlates to my ability to perform, entertain and impress everyone. Literally the phrase, you are as good as your last performance, became my way of thinking. And that's kind of thrown around a little bit in the performing arts world. Maybe some of you have been there know that feeling. You're kind of good, you're as good as your last gig. Uh, but that meant for me that regardless of any past achievements or successes, the mistakes that I would make would cost me a lot. Um, and there, there, there was a lot of pressure and a burden to carry there. So during the first year at music college, I, I did become quite depressed, became quite anxious in that performance environment, and I was constantly striving for people's approval and people's praise. So actually, I decided to uh, leave and start a different course at the, uh, um, in sound engineering. Now, we'll fast forward a few years. That was the background, the boring background detail. Now we'll get to the interesting bit. So um, towards the end of uni, into my early 20s, I set up my own business uh, with a friend and worked self-employed. And I was living what I would call the entrepreneurial dream uh, for about seven years. And as the years went on, I still found that that performance mentality was still deep rooted into my mindset. Uh, the need to still always impress people, to never have a failure, otherwise I wouldn't get any more work. So during the early years of running my business, I was always striving without realizing it to work to completely fulfill and satisfy myself. Um, and I was trying to make my own freedom. I wanted to be my own boss, manage my own time, theoretically have no cap on the amount of money you could make. Uh, no one telling me what to do. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? Um, but on top of that performance mindset, this also created a status mindset where I wanted to have this exciting entrepreneurial lifestyle which would fuel my sense of value, purpose, fulfillment. And I thrived off the feeling of having this impressive lifestyle or what I thought would be impressive. So that was my sort of situation for the first five years of uh, working life. And I was stuck in this basically pretty insecure and fragile mindset of maintaining a status which I idolized and assuming people were impressed by it. So fast forward a few more years and the pandemic hits us in 2020. By 2021, it was extremely difficult to keep the business running consistently because as of March, April 2020, the music industry just stopped and um, that had a massive impact on my business. Um, and also as of April 2021, um, we had Eisen, and me and my wife Siobhan, Eisen came into the world and um, it meant that Siobhan was on mat leave for a year and we had no income. Um, so at this stage, I needed to get out of self-employment and find employed work. And this was a huge, huge moment for me because... Um, I had to leave my entrepreneurial dream behind. And it meant walking away from what I depended on for my purpose, calling, some people call it, uh, fulfillment, um, the sense of value in the world. It was a massive moment for me, and I don't know if anybody else has sort of had to leave something that big behind or leave a certain career or a certain type of work behind, but it's, it's a really big thing to go through. Um, and like I mentioned at the beginning, this story is partly about God providing a job for me at just the right time, and he did that, and I'm so thankful for it. But in my walk with God and my personal development, there's something much deeper that God did in me. 
During those pandemic years, a Christian mentor who met with me often came alongside me. A friend supported me. My wife, Siobhan, supported me. And they helped me gain a fresh perspective. Um, I read some helpful Christian books on the theology of work, so God's view of work. And I learned that I need to have capacity in all areas of my life to be able to serve and love people. You know, we need emotional and mental capacity, physical capacity, financial time. And of course, coming back to God's word and seeing what he says about our value and our identity in him. So even in recent times, you know, last year we did the Egypt series and I Am Who series. And that was a huge help for me in processing this and moving out of that previous identity as a business owner and everything that was wrapped up in that. And learning and getting a greater understanding of God, who God has made me to be. Learning that my value is in who he designed us to be and what he calls us to do, not in my own performance or worldly status. So over time, my way of thinking changed and I truly could let go of my past successes and my failures defining me. In Romans, it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. And I believe God led me out of that season of my life and took the desire of owning a business for its status away from me. And this has helped me on my walk with God to not conform to the pattern of this world. So God sometimes does take things uh, away from us that aren't right for us anymore. But he's always going to replace that with something better because he's a good God. And, you know, Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew, which of you, if your son asked for bread, would give him a stone? And I did ask God constantly to get me out of that stressful time during the pandemic with all the burdens of running a business in the creative sector. And I, had hit, um, and I asked him to lead me into a stable job. And he did just that. God brought me out of what became... Oh, no, sorry, God brought about what had become a dream job for me. But ironically, uh, the job that I've got now isn't the thing that totally satisfies me. Even though five years ago, I would have said it, that would be the thing that satisfies me, but it's not. So what does this all boil down to, wrapping it all up? God has taught me that we're all made, me included, to bear his image and reflect his character. And in many ways, this means to be relational and to show love to others, because God is a relational, loving God. God ultimately has created me to be a son, a brother, a husband and a dad, a friend, a church member, a resident of New Mills. I need to stop now. <laughs> the timer went off. Uh, an employee and a colleague. And of course, uh, a worshipper and a follower of Jesus. Uh, these are relational roles that God has given me, which gave me, uh, give me daily opportunities to reflect God's character and bear his image. And this is what gives me purpose and fulfillment. And this is how God values us and sees, uh, this is how God values us and how we should value ourselves. And it's what fuels now my self-esteem. And of course, it's a journey and I've never, I'll never get it right all the time, but it's uh, what I'll aim to do. Um, day by day. So back in 2014, when I started my own business, realizing without realizing it, I ended up striving to create my own freedom, shape my own identity and design my own purpose. But now being closer uh, in relationship with God and taking discipleship seriously, I'm learning about how God cares for every aspect of our lives and all of the roles that he has given us. So I now live to serve the king in everything I do, which is one of uh, the things in our Revive Code. Uh, we work for the king. And if any of you aren't familiar with what we mean by that, we're not talking about King Charles. We're talking about King Jesus. Um, and working for the king is what is true freedom. That is my true identity. Uh, and that's what makes me valuable and gives me a purpose. And that's the story of his grace.